Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, I want to answer a question that I get asked quite often with, uh, well, it's in regards to a cold joint. This is a cold joint. A cold joint means that you didn't finish the plaster at the end of the wall. Generally, a question I get once a week, twice a week, is they'll say, Jay, Kirk, I'm just doing the job all by myself. Bad move, guys. You need two guys to do plastering, one to mix and one to put it on. Well, anyway, they'll say, I'm just doing the job by myself. Where could I stop? You stop from corner to corner. Otherwise, you get a cold joint. If you're going to paint a wall, it's not too important. But if you're going to do a color coat, maintenance-free, integrated color finish, a cold joint will show every time. So what I got here is I just did a float finish. But I'm going to show you guys a little bit about hydration, how to hydrate a wall especially if you're doing cinder block. This was supposed to be a cinder block wall. Uh, anyway, that's another story. He just built a fence. The stucco's on the other side. Two, what this is, guys, you see all these uh, mushrooming things. This is called a key. Uh, it's, say if you're right here, this is rib lath. And when you plaster through the rib lath, or if you have interior walls, say your house was built between eight, 1880 and 1940, before the, well, sheet came out around 1950. But if you have old wood lath, this is how it plaster adheres. It goes through those keys and it mushrooms out. And that's how, these are called keys. So I'm going to use that and show you, and use these keys right here to show you this cold joint. It's kind of going all over the place, but here's the thing, guys. When you plaster a wall, you got to wet it. Now, how hot is it here? It's, 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 uh, we're in the summertime. It's 90 degrees. Okay. So you've got a, a hot wall. What you do is you hose it down. You hydrate it. And see, for this wall right here, I'm going to uh, finish this right here to prove a point. So what I want to do is I just want to wet it. I want to wet it a little bit just so that the stucco won't adhere and suck in too fast. If it sucks in too fast, then I can't put my base, I, I can't put my follow-up coat. On this one right here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hydrate this right now. Hydrate means when you do the scratch coat, you hydrate. When you do the brown coat, you hydrate. You just soak it. How much is, when you're hydrating the wall, say it just got stuccoed, you're going to do this. You're going to hydrate it and let it, let the water just come down. Let it soak into it. Right here, I'm hydrating this wall right here, and I'm let, this is an excess of water, meaning if I go to put my stucco on this, it's not going to set very well because it's an excess, but I'm starting here first, so I wet this, then I keep wetting this, so when I get ready to do this wall, it's already hydrated. Anyhow, this, this is the cold joint. This is what I'm, the question I was originally asked. I'm uh, going all over the place. I do tend to ramble, guys. But anyway, to answer that question of cold joints. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my next um, coat on right here. Now, me, guys, you, you, might, you might say, the trial you use is a little big. But I recommend for you guys, use a 16. This is a 20-inch. It, it is kind of hard to grip it. But I'm used to it, and it makes my job go better. It's, uh, I don't like to uh, keep dipping in and spinning my wheels. Anyhow, back to the area of what I'm trying to explain here. Cold joint. So if you're, having, if you're doing a house, you don't want to leave a whole bunch of cold joints. I at one time used to do... Uh, arbitration and I went out to look at a house and this was like a 10 million dollar house way back uh, it was back maybe I guess 15 years ago when I used to do a lot of that uh, arbitration stuff I don't do it anymore because what I'd be doing is going against my fellow plaster I had told the arbitrator if you want me to arbitrate it you bring the guy who did the stucco with you because I don't feel comfortable talking about anybody's work unless they're there. Anyhow, getting back to this, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put the stucco on like right here. 
Now, too, the reason I'm uh, doing this, guys, too, is because I did an arbitration job, I'd say about 15 years ago. And the very front of the house, the very front, the guy had a, uh, oh, he had a front door, possibly a, like a $5,000 front door. And right above the front entrance of the house, there was a cold joint. And the guy color-coded it. And you could see the outline of where they stopped. It was just like this. It was plain as day. You could see that transition. And so the fellow who hired me to do the arbitration said, Kirk, how come? And I said, well, obviously, the door was put in. Then they changed the door and put something else in. And the contractor didn't know that he should have... Uh, uh, I'm getting their staple sticking out right here. So anyway, the contractor didn't know that he should have uh, addressed that differently, meaning before he did his color code, he should have skim coated that wall or applied a bonding agent. That would have eliminated this, this cold joint. So now that this is on right here, guys, I'm going to let that set because it's not ready to float. And I'm going to float it here. I'll show you on this wall right here that I, I've already, uh, well, hydrated it. Let's hope that stays right there. How to skim it. Okay, this is already hydrated. It's, it's good enough for a skim coat. So what I'm going to do is show you a steel trowel finish. Hard steel trowel finish. And then I'll show you how to float it. Okay. Again, I think I have enough mud here to do this one square. And what I'm just using regular Portland cement too, guys. Portland cement, you mix it, you put three times as much sand to every one part of stucco, and you're set. Now this, this right here, where the key is, it's, it's a little inconsistent, meaning it's an inch up here, it's a half inch here, it's, it's a little weird, but the backside wasn't what was the main concern when doing this wall. Come on now, stay up there. All right. I think I have just about enough, and I'll show you a steel trowel finish, guys, and then I'll show you how to stucco or float it like we did there. All right, guys, we got those corners filled in now. Uh, what I'm doing is, because I use that uh, pull trowel, it's a swim pull trowel, it doesn't, doesn't get the corners very, very well, so I'll just use, usually keep a square trowel. And by the way, this trowel isn't a complete radius. It's straight here and then an arc only at the end. This is called swim pull, not swimming pull. Why, I don't know. But uh, anyway, okay. Here's a steel trowel finish, guys. You take your trowel and wet it. If this trowel is not wet, guys, you cannot do a steel trowel finish. A steel trowel finish, whether it's inside or outside, you've got to have water on your trowel, guys. There's no water, you're not going to do it well. So all I'm doing is I'm coming down, and if, if I was to go down with no water, what would happen? It would just pull the cement right off. So keep your trowel wet if you're going to do inside or outside, and just take it. What you try to do is you're using the, the trowel as a rod, a straight edge, a T-bar. So you want to make the, the, the walls as straight as possible if that's what you want, or if you're from the UK, Oh, over there, they have more uh, old world finishes where they're not troubled by a perfect wall. In fact, I like that too, where we don't have to go extreme perfection like, say, tiles are going to go on it. Anyway, there's a steel trial finish, guys. And again, how do you get a steel trial finish? Unless you keep this trial wet, guys, you're not going to be able to do it. You know, I can't do it. I don't know anybody who can do it. You've got to have a wet trial, and you just you skim it. That's it. Just skim it. Keep that trial wet. And will this hairline crack? 
because of the instance, doubtful. If it's on a wall that's lath and plaster, say a house, and it's made of wood, that house moves, so they will crack or hairline. But it's nothing, say, a color coat won't cover or a good quality primer and paint, such as like Sherwin-Williams. You, if, you, if this got a hairline crack, you just paint it, guys, and it goes away. Anyway, this is called a steel trial finish. I'm going to get back to my cold joint, what I was originally showing you guys. Okay, so you got a cold joint. You don't want a cold joint, guys. What you want to do is go from corner to corner. But since I've been asked this question so often, I'll tag this video cold joint. What's a cold joint? That's a cold joint. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to take the new stucco and bring it into the existing stucco and feather it in. And I'm pretty good at feathering in, good as the next guy. But still, a cold joint, if you go to color code it, which a lot of newer homes get. A lot of new homes get color coat, maintenance free, integrated color finishes. The older homes, they're usually painted. It's kind of like a weep screed. Uh, people call me and say, hey, should I put a weep screed on my house? It doesn't have one. Half the world doesn't, guys. Uh, weep screeds weren't code until 1975. In fact, we didn't start putting them on until about 1980. So a uh, few things, guys. Color coats are not actually code. You don't have to do a color coat maintenance free finish. But if you are doing a color coat maintenance free finish, make certain that you don't have what I just showed you. That's a cold joint. And it doesn't matter whether or not you're doing a cinder block wall, a house, anything, in, in, interior chimney, whatever. You don't want a cold joint. You want to finish it just like that. Okay, so that's, this is what is called fixing a cold joint. But again, if a color coat finish were to be applied over this, this joint would bleed right through it every single time. There's no way around it unless you were to take primer, say Weldcrete or Quickcrete by Quickcrete Bonding Agent. They sell at Home Depot. You would go over this entire thing once or twice. Now when you color coat over this, you won't see that cold joint. But if you apply a maintenance for your color coat finish, that's colored stucco like a brick, you will see it. So there you go with a cold... Uh, cold joint. As far as how do you get a float finish, this is a, well, I call it a float because I use a float. This is a sand finish, guys. It's the sand. We bring the aggregate or the sand out. What you do over, you get yourself a sponge float. This is a sponge float. Yeah, they come in all colors. And you just wet it a little bit, and this will bring the aggregate out. Now, depending on if you want it super heavy, a lot of water. If you want it super fine, less water so just for the sake of showing you guys this um, I'm gonna put it I'm not gonna dip this in the water bucket anymore because I, I want to prove a point here okay now I just want a really fine sand finish and this is just with straight straight stucco there's no color coding here it's just straight stucco See, that's pretty fine now, if I wanted to make it heavy like this, and this, this so-called fence here, this is the property of another fellow. He said, Kurt, can you give me a sand finish? And I said, sure. That's a fine sand finish. Here's, if you want it heavier, add more water. All I'm going to do is add a little bit more water, guys. That's extra water, and that's a heavier sand finish. Anyway, guys. I thought I'd point out what a cold joint is because I have the opportunity here. And I thought while I'm on that same topic, I'd show you what it looks like the inside of walls when they're keyed in, say like button board in 1955 or the wood lath in the early 1900s. It keys through it and that's how it adheres. Okay guys, we thought we would show you the final uh, product on the other side. The guy came home and he says, hey man, What's with all this wire showing? I said, that's your finish, brother. <laughs> Enjoy it. And I said, oh, I'm just kidding, man. We end up floating all of these just to prove a point, uh, to show you guys what it would look like. Uh, you can play tic-tac-toe. <laughs> kidding again. Um, anyway, you can see kind of how this, this structure is built. Is it solid? Yeah. How long will it last? It'll outlast me, that's a fact. 
you figure the stucco will last forever. I mean, that's not going anywhere. The rib lath will last forever. What do uh, this pressure treated four by fours, how long do they last? I think like 20, 25 years. But if you paint this every 10 years, and I'm talking about a good quality primer and paint like Sherwin Williams, this thing will last a thousand years. Every 10, every 20 years, you paint it with Sherwin Williams, for, for example. It lasts forever. You never have to paint it again. Uh, we decided we would bring the truck around the block rather than lift those buckets because we're talking 30, 40 buckets to carry over here to do just this finish here. Anyway, it looks good. You guys decide on what kind of uh, wall you want. This is just an alternative wall because he's a buddy of mine. He said, Kirk, rather than coat both sides, is there another way? There's about 50 ways, guys, maybe 100, 1,000 ways to do it. This is just another way to do it. Anyway, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera. As usual, we thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates, so if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that, for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.